This video will discuss atomic orbital nodes in the atomic orbital wave functions of our hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model. So our model of the hydrogen atom, as we've said, is a single proton with mass mp, but it is fixed at the origin with a positive e for charge. An electron with negative e charge and mass me is at some position in space, and it is some distance from the proton r. It's free to move out in three-dimensional space, but because our potential energy depends on r, we've chosen to express our operators and our wave function in terms of spherical polar coordinates, r, theta, and phi. Our Hamiltonian that we derived was equal to the kinetic energy operator, negative h-bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron times Laplacian squared in spherical polar coordinates, minus the potential energy E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Charge of the proton times charge of the electron is minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught distance between them. For our Schrodinger equation, we have H psi equals E psi. Psi depends on three quantum numbers, n, l, and m, and it depends on the spherical polar variables r, theta, and phi. Our energy only depends on the principal quantum number n, and our wave function psi nlm of r, theta, and phi can be broken down into a radial and an angular component, the radial component being r, nl of r, depending on the quantum numbers n and l, and the angular part depending on the quantum numbers l and m, and the angular variables theta and phi. So I've been discussing nodes a little bit within the rest of this chapter, so I'm going to define more, more clearly what we mean by nodes in this video. So there are two kind of nodes that we're interested in, radial nodes, where there's a certain value of radius away from the proton, where you have zero electron density, and angular nodes, where there's a certain value of theta and or phi, where at that particular angle you have zero electron density. So we have an example down here in the 3s function we have two radial nodes, points where you have zero density, and in the 3dz squared function there are two angles, two values of, of theta where you have no, ang no electron density at that angle. So the number of radial nodes that we have is going to be determined by the quantum numbers n and l. The number of radial nodes is determined by the radial wave function, so that's n minus l minus 1 radial nodes. The number of angular nodes that we have is determined by our spherical harmonic function. The number of angular nodes equals the quantum number l. So the total number of nodes we have is the number of radial nodes plus the number of angular nodes. So that's n minus l minus 1 plus l. So the total number of nodes is n minus 1. So let's remind ourselves that the quantum number l, or the orbital angular momentum quantum number, is a number that starts at 0 and can go up from there. And that corresponds to a specific letter of function that we have described these with since general chemistry. L equals 0 is an S function. L equals 1 is a P function. L equals 2 is a D function. F, G, H, etc. And it goes on from there. So if we look at some common orbitals that we're used to, the 1S function, if we substitute in these values of N and L, 1S is N equals 1, L equals 0. That's zero angular nodes, zero radial nodes, and zero total nodes. The 1s is just a spherically symmetric decaying function. For the 2s, n equals 2, l equals 0. So we have zero angular nodes, but one radial node. n minus 1 is 1, one total node. n minus l minus 1 is also 1. For 2p, we have one angular node, l equals 1 for p n equals 2, so we have 0 radial nodes and 1 total node. 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. 3s has 2 radial nodes, 3p has 1 radial node, and 3d has 0, but 3p has 1 angular node and 3d has 2. So all of the n equals 3 level have 2 total nodes. For n equals 4, there are 3 total nodes split between radial and angular 
values, L equals 0, 1, 2, 3, determining the number of angular nodes and the number of radial nodes filling up the rest. So I have this example kind of crudely drawn out here in terms of the 3s. There's our two radial nodes in the 3s function. 3dz squared is 3d, so it has two angular nodes, but it doesn't have any radial nodes. So there's a really nice uh, image from the internet that I found, um, links to the original posters uh, page in the description. So this, this shows up the concept of nodes quite nicely. So this little number here is the actual quantum numbers n, l, and m, which we see the wave function defined over here on the right. So 200 is the 2s function. We see the radial node down there. So the very, very bright things are high density, high wave function. Orange is medium and purple is small with black being zero. We see the radial node. For 3s, we see the two radial nodes. 4s has three. 5s has 4, so we can see that trend. Two one, psi 210 is 2pz, one angular node. 2px and 2py have one angular node. We have 3p here, one radial node, one angular node, and other 3p orbitals. The 3d orbitals, 3dz squared, are two angular nodes. 3d 3d uh, zx and zy have two angular nodes and then there's another one in plane here for dx squared minus y squared and dxy but we can't see it because we need to look uh, at a different viewing angle so that's the basic concept of nodes you can see very nicely in these diagrams how we get that interplay between radial nodes and angular nodes which is all controlled by the quantum numbers defining how many nodes we have of each type.